We can use linear equations to solve everyday problems by converting the information into symbols and then solving those equations. So we'll start off with just actually writing the equations. So in the first example we've got when 3 is subtracted from a certain number the result is 14. The first thing we need to do is decide what the letter is going to be. In this case certain number is the unknown pronumeral. So I'm going to say let x equal certain number and if I do that then I need to subtract 3 from it so x take away 3 and the result is 14. So this algebraic equation at the end here could be used to solve for x. Let's look at the next one. 4 more than 8 times a certain number is 0. So I'm going to choose x again to be my certain number. So 4 more than 8 times it. So 8 times the certain number and 4 more equals 0. In the last one we've got uh, when 3 is divided by a certain number. So 3 divided by our certain number which we call x. The answer, which means equals, is 4 more than the number. 4 more than the number. With all these questions you need to read the sentence correctly and translate it into symbols. So here's a few clues. 3 is subtracted from means the 3 is going to be subtracted from the from the x. It'll be the second number not the first one. Students often confuse that. So in the second one we've got 4 more, which is the plus 4, 8 times a certain number, which is the 8x, and it has to, is 0, means equals 0. In the last question, 3 is divided by a certain number, so 3 is divided by a certain number becomes 3 over x, and the answer is, means that's where the equal sign is, 4 more than the number, so 4 more than the number. This last equation is actually not a linear equation, but it's an equation that can be solved. In this next problem, it says that Kirill is three times older than Ethan, and their combined age is 36. So I need to write that down as an equation, and I'm going to let um, E equal Ethan's age. I usually find it's easier to pick the younger one to be the symbol. And Ethan being younger than Kirill, I'm going to make E be Ethan's age. So we know that Kirill's age is going to be three times that, so it's going to be three times Ethan's age. And I can write it like that, 3E. So let's try and write the equation now. The combined age is 36, so the answer has to be 36. And I need to add their ages together because I'm combining them. So that means I need 3e and plus e to be 36. So 3e is Kirill's age because he's 3 times Ethan's age. And e is just Ethan's age. So to solve that, I've got 3e plus e. I can put those two together because they're the same letter. So 4 E's has to equal 36. Divide both sides by 4, so the 4's cancel. And the right hand side ends up being 9. So E equals 9. So Ethan's age is 9. That means Kirill's age is going to be 3 times 9, 27. And if I do 9 plus 27, I get 36, which is the answer I needed. So let's actually solve a problem now. In a game of basketball, Ben scored 5 more points than Stefan. If they scored 29 points between them, how much did each of them score? So there's a few bits of information here. First of all, Ben scored 5 more points than Stefan. They scored 29 points between them, and we want to find out how much did each of them score. So I'm going to start off by actually saying that 
S, or I'm going to let S equal Stefan's score. That means I can write an equation with the, that letter in it. So let's see how we go. So Ben's score plus Stefan's score has to equal 29. So it has to equal 29. So we're saying Stefan's score is S. And we're saying that Ben scored five more points than Stefan. So I can actually write S plus five for Ben. So Ben has five more points than Stefan. There is Stefan's score and the total is 29. So just to be really clear here, Ben's score is what's in the bracket. His score is the same as Stefan's, plus five more, because he has five more points than Stefan. So to solve this now, I've got S plus five in brackets, plus S equals 29. Don't need the brackets around S plus five, so S plus five plus S equals 29. That means two S's plus five equals 29. Now I need to find out what S is, so I need to eliminate the 5 and the 2. So first of all I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So 2S plus 5 take away 5 equals 29 take away 5. That gives me, well because these two 5s make 0, that gives me 2S equals 24. So let's divide both sides by 2. The two 2's cancel. So S equals 12. That means that Ben's score must be 17 because he has 5 more. And if I add 12 plus 17, I get 29. So that makes me feel happy I've got the right answer. In this next question, we've got Zash's taxi service, which charges $3.60 for the flag fall. That's before you get even go anywhere. And $1.38 per kilometre for any trip around Cheltenham. Alana's taxi fare is $39.48. So we want to work out how far she travelled. So let's start off with looking at how much a fare costs. A fare costs... $3.60 plus 1.38 by the kilometres. So I'm letting K equal the number of kilometres travelled. The fare for, for Alana is 39.48. So that has to equal 3.60 plus 1.38 K. Now, obviously, what we want to do is work out um, what K is worth. We need to make K the subject, so I have to el eliminate from the right-hand side of the equation the 3.6 and the 1.38. I'll start off by eliminating the 3.6 because it's added on, whereas the 1.38 is multiplied. So 39.48 minus 3.60 equals 3.60, take away 3.60, plus 1.38k. So we've subtracted 3.60 from both sides. On the right-hand side, 3.60 take away 3.60 makes 0. So that means that 35.88 equals 1.38k. We'll divide both sides by 1.38. And on the right-hand side, the 1.38s cancel, leaving just k. So k is equal to 35.88 divided by 1.38, which is 26. So that's the number of kilometres that Alana has travelled on her taxi journey. In this last question, we've got two garden beds, and it says these garden beds have the same area. Find the dimensions of each garden bed. So we know that area equals length by width. For the first rectangle, the length is 25 and the width is x. So the area is going to be 
25 multiplied by x. For the second rectangle, the length is 15 and the width is x plus 6. So if I'm going to write the area for those, I'm going to write area equals 15 multiplied by x plus 6. And because it's x plus 6, I'll put it in a bracket so that there's no doubt that that whole thing, the x plus 6, is actually the whole of the width. Because these areas are the same, I can write that both of those are equal to each other. So I'm going to write 25x equals 15x plus 6. And that's because both areas are equal to each other. This is one area, the area of the top rectangle. This is the area of the bottom rectangle. So what we have now is one equation with one unknown, but the one unknown is in two places. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually expand the brackets because what I want to do is get the x's together rather than being on opposite sides of the equal sign. So to expand the brackets, we need to multiply 15 times x and 15 times 6. So 25x will be equal to 15x plus 90, 15 times 6. I need to get the x's together on one side so I can make x the subject. So I'm going to subtract 15x from both sides. 25x minus 15x equals 15x minus 15x plus 90. 15x take away 15x is 0. So what's left is 25 take away 15. 10x equals 90. Divide both sides by 10 so I can make x the subject by eliminating or cancelling the 10. And I end up with x is equal to 90 over 10, so x equals 9. Now if I check that by substituting back into the equations at the top here, I can see if I'm right. 25 multiplied by 9 is 225. If I put 9 here instead of x, so substitute for x, 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 times 15 is also 225. That means I'm happy with my result because the areas of both of these two rectangles were meant to be the same and the solution of x equals 9 does actually make those areas the same. Now the question actually asks to find the dimensions of each garden bed. So for the top garden bed, its dimensions are 9 and 25. And for the bottom garden bed, because x plus 6 is 15, its dimensions are 15 times 15 and is actually a square.